As we said, the panic happened while the fireworks show was underway. Many people ended up separated from their families and friends while trying to get away. We were worried, obviously, because everyone started running. We didn't want to separate because that's what that's, I feel like that's, that's the most scariest thing is being, being separated from your family. Police did set up a special reunification center for people who got separated last night. And a few hours later, they said everyone had been reunited. And heading into last night, many were already on edge after yesterday's mass shooting during a 4th of July parade in a Chicago suburb. So earlier today, I had a conversation with our traffic safety expert, Trooper Steve, explaining how many of us were unsure what exactly to do as the chaos unfolded. We were inside the band shell, which okay. a lot of people, if you've been to a concert at La Giola, you know there's the stage. There's an area behind that stage. So we had our shot set with the view of the fountain. Okay. And so Matt had just counted down to the fireworks. And I think the fireworks have been going for about 10 minutes. And we had all been back inside the band shell. And we're watching. And then you could see like a rush of people across the lake. And then these people start running into the band shell, which this is a small area. We've got Closed our equipment off. there. Right. 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 We've got our equipment. You know, the Orlando Concert Band, they were storing some of their stuff in there. People just start running into the, into the band shell. I know you've watched a lot of the video. Yeah. What, first of all, what is your reaction to seeing all the video that was released? This is it's unfortunate because every time I look at stuff, I look at it from a very tactical mind. And being in news has grown, has put that empathy in me a little bit to understand why people react the way they do. But people truly got scared. And talking with some of you here in the New Six building, I can feel what happened for, to you guys because it was that fast. Yeah. And what you see was just a small crowd mm -hmm. take off running and create a, a wave of fear. We all need to prepare for a threat. No matter what you believe or anything, we're all kind of under attack right now. Before you leave that house, what are you going to? You're going to a concert? Mm -hmm. Are you going to a UCF football game? Where are you going? And set in the worst case scenario. And it, it sucks to talk about. How do you know when you're making that plan? Because you have to make decisions in the moment, depending yep. what happens. How do you know whether to shelter in place or whether to run? How do you know how to assess quickly? That is a difficult question. I'm going to say you don't know until you're right there. And if we at least took two seconds, mm -hmm. two seconds can ultimately save whether you're jumping in a lake, whether you're going to stand right there, or whether you're going to take off and run. And what I mean by that is observing what's happening and then even practicing talking about, all right, when we get there, if something happens, meet me here. We're not going to run this way. Meet me here. Hard plans that don't change. And he was also talking about, you know, these conversations aren't fun to have, but, you know, they're important because when you get into a situation like this, it can happen anywhere and it will happen again. And we all know that. And he also said the party that you're going with, have a group text and maybe even loop in someone who's not with you so that, you know, you can keep in touch or if you lose track of somebody, you mm -hmm. can also have somebody kind of yeah. on the outside helping That's you. That's a really good idea. I love especially what, how he said to take two seconds yes. in that moment. Something I did not do last night, mm -hmm. and I was a hot mess, and I apologize for that. Um, because when you see that, and I know in my experience, I panicked, and mm -hmm. I just was trying to get away as fast as I could, and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I was creating more of a disaster yeah. because I wasn't just trying to be calm. I was just trying to flee. And yeah. so I think that what he said, taking those two mm -hmm. seconds can really make a big difference in your overall outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bottom line, if you've already thought about it, then you probably are apt to make a better decision mm -hmm. in the future. And we all should think about it. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned those those places, but I had a mm -hmm. discussion with my kids today about mm -hmm. schools and grocery yeah. stores and wherever you may yeah. be. And he said, you know, it's not easy to yeah. talk to your kids, but we all have to do it. This yeah. is the world we're living in. Mm -hmm.